There's Bob and FP before they wrap it up and uh, head uh, for the airport and fly down to San Diego. Boy, a tough loss, guy. A, ga a game today that Maya pitched so well, but again, uh, just didn't get a lot of run support. And uh, I think the key to the whole ball game, obviously, is Matt Cain. He's done this to the Nats before. A couple of years ago, a one nothing, a complete game win against Washington. So he is very capable of what he did today. And you saw this early in the game. I think you saw him pitch to about two guys, and you knew he had some of his best stuff today. I've seen the kid pitch since he signed with the Giants 18, coached him in San Jose, so I knew when he had his good command it was going to be a tough day for the Nationals. And I know the Nationals haven't hit this year. And, you know, when you face a three or four or five star, and what happened today happens, you kind of scratch your head. But Matt Cain's one of the elite pitchers in the National League, so every once in a while it is okay to tip your cap and say, you know what, this guy had it going on today, and he did. It's that simple. I've seen him do it before. You know, the Nats haven't hit this year. It's, you know, you, you can't put it any other way. You can't sugarcoat it. But Matt Cain was really good today. And then, of course, Jim Ruggleman said uncharted waters for Maya had he stayed in the game. Ray said he would like to see some of those uncharted waters. And I think, Ray, the thing you hope now is is that now that he's pitched six pretty good innings, maybe he gets a little longer out there next time. But you, you kind of have to think in his first two starts, he didn't do a whole lot to earn that unless, except he was pitching well today. So that'll be an interesting thing to keep an eye on the next time he pitches. And the next time he's scheduled to pitch is against, guess who? Mr. Pujols in the Cardinals on Tuesday night. Yeah, that's going to be a tough matchup for him because all those guys, they swing the bat as well as anybody in the league. My thought, and I was going to ask you all the question, did you th think it was an early hook? But my thought was, you know, this guy has struggled. He struggled after 50, 55 pitches. But today he was sharper than any time I've seen him, uh, even, even through all those innings. I mean, the other times, there were times when – he was in trouble. His curveball wasn't as sharp. But today, very effective with his curveball. Great location with his fastball. It just seemed to me that he got the ball up a little bit in that six. And you're thinking, gosh, all of a sudden, boom, he's going to get out of here. But then my thought process was when I saw 67 pitches, I thought that he might have a chance to go back out there. Did you, you guys ever think that they were considering that? Or was it just me thinking it was a quick hook? Well, as a former manager, Ray, don't you have to earn the right to be able to go longer into a baseball game? And I think when you talk about Uneski Maya this year with the Nationals, you know, four and two-thirds a couple of times, you, like Jim said, uncharted waters, and it can happen fast when it goes. So, you know, if Sean Burnett gets the job done, we're probably not talking about this. And I think if you were thinking at the time, yeah, it's not second-guessing. But if you're thinking it now, it can be construed as second-guessing. Well, and then on top of that, the fact that I was going to bring up Burnett, the Nets have a problem on the left hand of their left hand side of their bullpen right now. Doug Slayton ineffective. He goes on the DL in Arizona. Now Sean Burnett's been racked up about probably three of the last four or five times he's been out there. So some of these starters might get a little more rope before he takes them out. Yeah, I mean they might, and all of a sudden the left hander out of the bullpen is a big concern for the Nationals. Number one, uh, as a major league manager, what you do is. You read what the pitcher has in that last inning you saw. And uh, you can w watch him throw the ball great the whole game, and then all of a sudden you see him lose it. You talk to your pitching coach, and you feel it. Not being there, I can't feel it. You're just looking at 67 pitches, 46 strikes. The other side of the coin is when you make a decision like that, you say, my guy in the bullpen is better than this guy on the mound. That's what it boils down to. You make that decision, I'd rather have Sean Bennett in here than Maya because you figure at this point he's a better choice. So not second guessing. Johnny and I and a lot of us talked about it earlier that, you know, would you have left him in? No, wouldn't because he's struggled so much after 55 pitches. But just a thought to throw out there. And uh, But he, he thinks Sean Burnett's his best choice there. And that's what all managers do. They go to the guy that they think is the best choice and the best matchup in that situation. Isn't it scary sometimes, though, Ray, when, when you don't know what you're getting when you go to your bullpen? I, I remember oh, the short man. time I managed an A-ball. You know what you got on the mound right now. <laughs> you don't know what's coming into the game, regardless of history, what the guy's done the last couple of times out. So you know what you got there on the mound, and then you go to the pen, and it's always a mystery. You don't know what guys, that guy's going to have on that given day. That the is other thing about the Nats right now, the Nats bullpen guys, Seventh inning is kind of a question mark. You know, Clippard's the eighth inning guy, Storn's the closer, but with Burnett struggling and Todd Coffey having a couple of rough outings out here, who's the seventh inning guy right now? That's a question that's going to have to be answered unless all the starters start making like Lannon and Levo and Zimmerman and pitching seven every time out. 
FP, I'm thinking if your bullpen had been stronger, you'd still be managing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I manage well enough to be a broadcaster. <laughs> and you do a heck of a Me good too. job. Me too. <laughs> hey, you guys have a safe flight. We'll talk to you tomorrow night, the first of four from San Diego.